Back to Raw TV. I'm Herman Gaines. And I'm Nadia Schultz. And the title of our show is Weight of Glory. Mm -hmm. And tonight, the title of our show kind of plays in with the show in explaining what it means to look at the weight of the glory of the crucifixion and um, the resurrection of Jesus and what that means for us as Christians and our faith in Jesus, what that does for how we live our life, what that does for how we proclaim the gospel, um, and ultimately the freedom that we can find in it. Yeah, and it also uh, kind of ties into the idea of suffering as mm -hmm. well. We know that many uh, Christians have different views of suffering and what that looks like as it pertains to the glory of God. But we're going to mm -hmm. do our best to, you know, just present um, our, our, our thoughts as we understand the Word of God on this topic. And hopefully it'll be a benefit to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a, definitely a hard subject, something that, you know, I've never heard in Sunday school growing up. But um, I'm excited to hear about um, our experiences and how we can learn from our special guest, yeah. um, Dr. Tackett, uh, one of our professors, our doctors here rather at um, campus and he is a doctor of theology um, and so I'm excited to hear what he has to say and the wisdom that he brings to our conversation. Absolutely. It's going to be great. Don't go anywhere. Watch this video. There are a lot of different views on suffering in the church. Many of us wonder what role does God play in suffering? Does he plan it? Does he work even the evil things that happen in our lives to our good? Or do we just live in a fallen world and what happens is outside of God's control, but he just makes the best of it? Whatever your view is, one thing that we do know is that we are guaranteed suffering in this life. And Jesus said that in this world we will have many troubles, but to take heart because he has overcome the world. And the beautiful thing is, as Paul puts it, these light momentary afflictions are preparing us for an eternal weight of glory. So no matter what our views are on suffering and no matter what suffering we face, one thing that we do know is that we can look to an eternal glorious paradise with Jesus Christ for all eternity. I'm Knowledge Washington and that's your Food for Thought. So much for sticking with us. That was an awesome food for thought by yeah. Knowledge. Um, and so I just want to start off this panel by um, sharing with you Romans 8, 18. Uh, Consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed through Christ Jesus. Amen. And mm -hmm. I also Good. want to just keep that in mind as we go throughout this panel and introduce Dr. Tackett. Um, thank you so much for coming on the show. We're so glad to have you and to um, just add your voice to our discussion. So right. thank you for coming. You have my voice. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. So yeah, so this verse is talking about suffering and how we should, um, we can compare it to how James talks about count it all joy when you face trials of many kinds because it produces perseverance and the like. And so I want to just talk about um, what the application of suffering and um, that is with the cross and what that accomplishes um, for us as faith believers. So just starting off right away, <laughs> jumping right, straight in. Jump in. Right. <laughs> Both feet. Yeah, yeah, a lot there. Well, the, the significance of the cross, a lot of, uh, we have a lot of objective dynamics there of what uh, theologians will talk about the objective purpose of the cross and, and salvation and stuff, but um, one of the things that is perhaps more important as far as our daily day life is just the notion of a God 
who becomes human, that lives day-to-day -day life to the point of taking the worst point of life yeah. hmm. uh, and taking it in, in the most raw form. Mm -hmm. um, and m many times we think of our own sufferings and some people have really difficult sufferings and mm -hmm. others mm -hmm. we will, uh, our sufferings really aren't that much sufferings at all. Yeah. And we will call them sufferings. Yeah. Mm. They're more like uh, an inconvenience. Inconvenience, yeah. And uh, the notion of Christ being one of us says that he's in those points of the inconveniences yeah. mm. along with the points of uh, meeting death face to face. Mm. Um, and that is really significant, the, the idea of God becoming human. Mm -hmm. and being with us mm -hmm. and continually with us. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so then that begs the question of where does this suffering come from? If um, we have these, what I'm hearing is a level of what we attribute to suffering. We have the inconveniences, we have yeah. the trials, um, and then we have this level of suffering that Jesus went through. Yeah. Um, where does that come from? Is this just like a man-made concept that we have marked out all of these different things and attribute them to suffering, or um, is there a lot there of a times deeper? we put ourselves through suffering? Okay, mm -hmm. and very much so. Uh, yeah, uh, it's it's easier to uh, throw a bomb at somebody than it is to love them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And when we do that, we contribute suffering to other. Where does that ultimate expression come from? I mean. Uh, when we go to the biblical scriptures in, in Genesis, you immediately see uh, this snake that mm -hmm. comes and mm -hmm. tempts yeah. the other. Mm -hmm. right. And from this temptation comes a suffering. It's not the snake, though, mm -hmm. because when we, when we continue that passage, Genesis 3 talks about the snake coming. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then us doing what the snake says. Mm -hmm. And the result is God comes and loves us, but he says, you know what? This is what's happening to you. Mm -hmm. And then we see these expressions of suffering. And the, it talks there about human toil to get things to grow. Mm -hmm. It talks about women being in pain mm -hmm. to right. give birth, the most joyful part mm -hmm. of life. Yeah. And these things that come from the snake, mm -hmm. but it's ones that we mm -hmm. have caused. So do you think it's the um, discipline behind the, the, the sin or the wrongdoing? Yeah. Um, I, when I was really young, when I was really young, mm -hmm. uh, I was helping my mother cook. Mm -hmm. Now, I will tell you, a two-year-old doesn't help very much in the kitchen. Oh, okay. no. <laughs> but I was helping my mother cook, and she was showing me the different things to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, she, and but I noticed that she was putting pans on a furnace, mm -hmm. a gas mm -hmm. furnace where you see the flames, mm -hmm. you uh -huh. know. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, she stepped aside to do it. And I said I could do it too. Now, As all two years, two yeah, year olds think. Yeah, two year olds think. <laughs> I and, can do and, it. Yeah, I can do it. Yeah. And after all, even though mom said not do it, I picked it up now. I know. Mm -hmm. Well, if you look really close, there's a scar right here. Mm. Can you see it? it? Oh, I see it right there. Hey, you're Wait, good. It's visible. <laughs> <laughs> when I was young, it was very visible. Okay. Extremely mm -hmm. visible. Yeah. It's very, not very visible there at all. Uh, that scar didn't come from my hatred of my mother mm -hmm. or my wanting to disobey my mother. Right. Mm -hmm. It came from my wanting to do what my mother said, but not listening mm -hmm. to what she said. Yeah. And I think mm -hmm. often this notion of sin is listening to the wrong mm -hmm. snake. Mm -hmm. Wow, that is good. that's good. As That's opposed good. to listening mm -hmm. to God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think... I mean, that kind of goes with your example there. I think, I mean, suffering today is, is, is a natural part of life. Yes. Because of the fall, I mean, it's, it's something we have to deal with. Yeah. Um, sin separated us, but he became flesh so we could walk with him yeah. mm -hmm. through it. And I think also that is when it becomes joy because um, let's say some, somebody's walking through um, 
let's just say cancer, cancer is not joyful. It will never be, right. but it will be joyful when you're walking alongside Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, okay. then it transforms into joy, you right. know? And I think, mm. I think that's important to recognize that our suffering itself is not joyful. It's not joyful yeah. to, to walk through like some treatment or right. going to the hospital every day, but it is joyful to say, you know what? He came to save me mm. and therefore I can walk with him. Right. And mm -hmm. therefore I can count it as joy because he's yeah. with me. As a guest, yeah. can I tell a story that fits right with that? Of course. Yeah. Please yeah. do. <laughs> a long time ago, back in the dark ages, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, was, I was in the Navy and I got a, I picked up a very rare disease in the South Pacific. Um, and it's nearly always fatal. And um, I remember the last time I was in the hospital and couldn't walk. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was I, I was standing, and then my legs collapsed, oh. and it was assumed that I was going to die. I mean, right. in fact, they had called up Washington D.C. and got a replacement for me to come in, and all wow. that kind of oh, stuff wow. in mm -hmm. my position. Okay. I just, no, I wasn't going to be leaving that hospital. Oh, my um, in the process, they figured out what the disease was, and they uh, gave me some medicine that sometimes works but we know that there's other mm -hmm. way things that work. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and frankly, at that point, death wasn't very hard on my mind. Mm -hmm. I, I knew that whether I, in Paul's words, whether I lived or died, it, 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 was, mm -hmm. it, was, it was Christ. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. um, but I did, uh, well, I'm walking here today, you know? Yeah. So I, I recovered. <laughs> <Right there. laughs> uh, so this, it was an exciting time of being in the hospital, yeah, right. but it was when I left. But a few months later, I got a call. Actually, a couple of years later, I got a call. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a mother who had heard about the disease I'd had, and her son had picked up the same disease oh in, awesome. while they were missionaries mm -hmm. in Africa. Mm -hmm. um, and she said, can, can I come visit you? Mm. And, or can you come visit me? She thought I only lived about 30 minutes away. I lived several hours away. <laughs> oh, wow. And I said, That's I said, sure, I'll be there this afternoon. I got wow. in the car to see mm. her. That's and amazing. the joy on her face by mm. seeing my being able to walk because that gave her hope that her child would walk. Yeah. Wow. wow. Mm. And he did. Wow. He recovered as well. Oh, gosh. Very, mm. extremely rare Amen. situations. About 90% of the people die, or it did at the time. Wow. There's a higher recovery rate now. That's a praise yeah. God. But the, praise this, God. This kind praise of, God. you know, um, this this sadness, this this uh, uh, suffering, uh -huh. has a joy. Yes. Yes. And it's not that's always right. in the immediate. Mm. Right. Because yeah. joy there comes in the morning. There you go. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, that's very. We that's a that's lot powerful. to take in. A lot yeah. of. Uh, good fruit could come out of that, Definitely, you know, yes. and I, mm. I look forward to talking about it more and more on the show, especially mm -hmm. in light of the crucifixion. But first, mm -hmm. we want you guys mm -hmm. at home to watch this video by SEU Worship. Now I can see it. The clouds are clear and everyone hears it. The sound of hope, freedom is rising, glory is falling, the lost are returning home. There will be singing, there will be dancing, Jesus, our hope is here. The sound of the hurting will turn to rejoicing on that day. I know that you're coming. Let peace fill the street. 
The sound of the hurting will turn to rejoicing on that day. I know that you're coming again. Thank you, SEU Worship, for that amazing video. We know that our Savior is coming again. Mm -hmm. That's a reality that we can all embrace, right? Mm -hmm. um, so before we talk about the crucifixion in a little bit more detail, let's focus on it uh, here by going to John 19 and the 28th verse where uh, it clearly says, Jesus knew that his mission was now finished and to fulfill the scripture, he said, I am thirsty. Mm -hmm. Verse 29, a jar of sour wine was sitting there. So they soaked a sponge in it, put it up on a hyssop branch, and held it up to his lips. When Jesus had tasted it, he said, it is finished. Then he bowed his head and released his spirit. So let's talk about crucifixion in the light of what it established uh, here on earth. What, what did the crucifixion establish with us as believers? Um, I was funny because I got to speak with Dr. Musi. Um, and something that she mentioned to me was um, even before the cross, when they were doing sacrifices, she said it was always, always about relationship. And so yeah. for me, um, she made it clear because it's easy to take the sacrifices that was done before, the, before Jesus came and say, oh, it was less than. But she was like, it's such a symbol of like, hey, God always desired relationship with his people. Mm -hmm. So the way it was before Christ and even when it, when it came to him crucify, um, being crucified on the cross, never to devalue the, the relationship aspect that it always had. Mm -hmm. um, so that was pretty amazing to, to learn again. But also that, that Christ, that the power of the Lord, it, it's so sovereign. Um, the ability for him to come, to take on flesh, to partner with us, to remind us. I know Dr. Musi also mentioned um, something that even reminds us within even suffering suffering um, is that God can, yes, heal you instantly, but there's some times where God has to, to, to walk through it with you. And um, a very cool indicator of that is the fact that he took on that flesh. And so it helps us mm -hmm. to know that sometimes that healing's going to look like he's going to have to stand by your side and to push you through that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. yeah. Okay. So then what um, does the crucifixion then promise for um the followers of Jesus, and what does it almost protect us from? Mm -hmm. So um, we talked about earlier how the crucifixion, um, he took all of the sin of the world and abolished it with yeah. his death. So what does that protect us from, and how does that um, free us to live our lives? Um, because we know that sin obviously is, a, is binds us, but um, freedom from that is not a freedom to do whatever we want. Right. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean for us as faith followers or faith believers? Eternity. Yeah. <laughs> True. <laughs> Eternity. <laughs> uh, which, we, which is now. Yeah. I mean, yeah. uh, we, th we, think of, we think of a heavenly eternity, but how about a present eternity? Mm. The notion of what it means to be fully alive. Mm. Um, 
that, that's the significance of the crucifixion, of mm. present fully alive, because mm. in, in Christ the crucifixion isn't the end, the sacrifice mm. is not the end. Mm -hmm. When we look at the Hebrew sacrifices, the sacrifices were a symbol of what would be to come, right. or this symbol of, of freedom from mm -hmm. sin, but in Christ we have resurrection, mm -hmm. which is the fullness mm -hmm. of life. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, the same fruit that was on a tree that gave to sin, now the fruit of the tree is Christ. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, wow. And so you have this, mm -hmm. the, uh, and the taking of the fruit is taking of Christ to be resurrected. So mm -hmm. to, 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 to participate, to partake of the fruit is to partake of the fullness of humanity. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what it means to be fully alive. Mm -hmm. So when you say, I guess even when it comes to protection, is it just a protection from death? Yeah, it's, what is death? Death becomes not something that is, is insignificant, fully insignificant, but in, in, in Christ, death is followed by resurrection, mm. uh, That's right. uh, mm -hmm. which is the fullness. And uh, this resurrected body is the same body, but it's a unique body. Mm -hmm. It's unique beyond what, what it was. The, the Christ who was resurrected, it was the one that ate fish with them and ate bread with them and touched them and mm -hmm. ones that Thomas was able to put his hand on the mm -hmm. side and say, oh yes, that's a wound, but it was also the ones that went through a door that they weren't expecting to be open, that they, they couldn't walk through. Yeah. And, and he was one place and then another. It was the same Christ that they didn't recognize then all of a sudden their community table, table and they says, oh wow. This is this is person mm -hmm. that we've been we've been wanting to know. Mm -hmm. um, so the death is is the fullness of that death that was promised mm -hmm. in the garden of mm -hmm. sin. This death now is accepted and taken by Christ that mm -hmm. we may have fullness of life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The very life that was promised to Adam and Eve. Yeah, and that's not to say that the life that we do have, although. Um, beautiful and blessed because of the crucifixion and the sacrifice that God made, that Jesus made for us, is not to say that that's not going to be hard. No, right? No. Um, we're we're told mm -hmm. that it's yeah. going to be hard. It's going to have troubles, it's and good. it's it's going to be difficult. But that doesn't take away from the fact that Jesus ultimately made that sacrifice. So we don't have to continue yeah. living in that difficultness. And yeah, I, I think, know. Yeah. I was just going to say, I think sometimes there's a misconception that when you're a Christian, everything's going to be like sunshine and mm -hmm. rainbows all right. the time, but <laughs> mm -hmm. that's not the fact of the matter. And mm -hmm. even, like you said, there are going to be struggles that we go through while we're on earth, but at the end of the day, we do still have everlasting life mm -hmm. after earth, like after we've passed away. And then when we yeah. come into the kingdom, we still have that whole opportunity to be in God's presence. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And I love that that is the note that we end on because it's such a, a place that fills me with such hope and such joy. Um, and so I just want to thank you guys for your contribution for this um, conversation. It was really encouraging for me. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and pray us out. God, thank you so much for tonight. Thank you for reminding us of the um, weight that your glory through the suffering and crucifixion of Jesus um, holds. I pray that we would always remember that you didn't stop at the crucifixion, that Jesus rose again, and because of that, we get to live in your glory, and you get to walk, uh, we get to walk alongside with you. And so I just ask that... Um, that would impact our lives, that that would um, help us see our life here on earth as in a heavenly mindset, that it would remind us of our calling as Christians to tell others about you. Um, and I would just pray that um, you would use tonight to be a vessel for your love to be spread and your message to be heard by those who need it, God. And we just thank you so much for tonight and um, for the wisdom that was shared. We love you and all of this is for, your, for you and for your glory. And in your name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Well, that is it for us. Um, but until next time, don't forget to live it raw. raw. of hope, freedom is
The king is coming. 